All right, thank you so very much for joining us again. One more week. This is week number three in our youth series brought to you here by the Youth Ministries Department here at the Oak Lake Seventh day Adventist Church. This is OGTV. We're happy that you're joining us on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, and of course on YouTube. We have one of my favorite personalities ever here, right here with us today. He was the speaker for today's um, youth service and he focused on something that I'm going to really want, um, you know, kicking children out of the house. Ellen Joel Jackson, welcome. Thank you so much, sir. How are you doing? Not bad enough. Yeah? yeah you, don't back. you look well rested. You look like you went somewhere this yes, weekend. Yes, I did go somewhere this weekend. Yeah, because of facial. Not quite. Yeah, but your face is, you know, the face is, yeah. Yeah, I went and did some relaxing, some mm -hmm. family time. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's not family time, it's other time. <laughs> That's what they're saying. Yeah, so you spoke to us, Happy Father's Day, by the way. Same to you. Yeah. And you should say Happy Father's Day to Daddy. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Yeah. Big up. My, well, I don't think my father watched all the <laughs> But he's normally at Newport Church, his own church. But Daddy, Happy Father's Day to you. How do you feel about being a father, number one? I enjoy being a father. I enjoy learning all the lessons that come with it. I enjoy learning how to love and training and bringing up and instilling principles in these children. Um, doesn't come without its challenges, but I enjoy it overall. Greatest lesson that you've learned so far? Yes. I understand when the Bible says that Enoch walked with God 300 years after Methuselah was born. You know, it's a different experience. Yeah, you know, completely different. And you don't have two children, two. Uh, well, you're not at this stage yet where you're able to see the full character for no. uh, for John. No. But you're able to see semblance uh, coming up in in um, Joshua. Joshua. Yes. And what do you notice about your relationship with Joshua at this stage mm -hmm. of the game that you think is necessary for young fathers to understand? Yeah, the, the relationship is going to change over time. I'm really glad that you brought that up. Because yesterday I got to spend a couple of hours with him. I'm just me and him alone. And I, I, I've really come to appreciate how his thinking process is changing, how he's observing more um, in his surroundings, how he's making connections between how things relate to each other, how he's going beyond that to, to becoming creative with what's happening. And he's only four years old, but say half of the time before that, two years ago, you know, it was much different. He was more in baby form and so forth. Um, but now we're at the point where we can have more of a conversation with each other versus me giving directions and protecting, literally protecting from the nature. It can more be a conversation. And I believe that fathers, we, we will have to appreciate how our children change over time and realize that you know when they're 10, 15, 20 years old, they can be dealing with them or we dealt with them when they were five and two years old. So it's it's it's, it's really an interesting experience. Is that, is that what happened with your relationship with the father? Because let me just put it up there, I have a bias towards um, <laughs> Brother Jackson. I really <laughs> think he's one of the coolest, most respectable persons that I've ever met. Yeah. I really think that he's like that. But what, you, you, is it that you're seeing your, or patterning your relationship with your father in some respects in terms of how you deal with Joshua? Yes, certainly. Um, my father is a lot quieter than I am. So he doesn't talk much and so forth, you know, really into his work. But in interacting with us as we grow up, um, I can see how, well, I don't have much memory of when I was five years old. But see him relate with Joshua and how they converse with each other and then compare that with how he dealt with him when he was two years old on the ground, rolling around and everything. I, I, I see that who I am now in relating to Joshua. A lot of that I'm emulating from my father and how he dealt with us, uh, me and my brother growing up. So yeah, there's a lot from my father that I'm picking up. Yeah, but there's not just, um, there's not the, well, how many children do your parents have? Let me put it on here, Tom. Two sons and a daughter, but the daughter is from a mother. Right. So they grew up in a home basically with two, mm -hmm. well, two of you who are boys. How did the interaction differ with, with your, from your father's perspective mm -hmm. than with your sister? Did you see that parental difference coming out in parental style? Well, my situation is a bit different. 
because my sister is about 15 years older than me. Oh, so you did grow with her? No, we didn't. Okay. Technically, we were always in the same house. Yeah. But that huge age gap, um, I one didn't see my father being a parent to my sister. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the same time, um, he, 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 yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have seen him parenting her. And then when I would have come of age, you know, where I can appreciate it. Right, so it's just he was dating. Basically. So when, when, when she was well a teenager and so forth. So you're the younger up to David. Right. Right. So your 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 knowledge of how your father parented you and David. Mm -hmm. How do you what what lessons do you learn from that in terms of fatherhood and boys? Mm -hmm. Boys are different. Very. Boys are different from girls. Very different. And boy is different from boy. Yeah. So my, my brother and I, although we, we have many similarities together, personality and character, um, we approach situations differently. He is more the forward leader type, although he's very quiet, he's really the one to be at the front. Um, so what you find is that he would be the one to strongly put across his position. Me, not so much. I am already very docile, Jacob kind of individual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is just taking the good qualities, the Esau type mm -hmm. of individual. So you find that Daddy had to deal with us differently mm -hmm. because of that. He could more get across his points to mm -hmm. me versus with David. So Interesting. <laughs> so you, you, you have, as a young father, you're looking on your history with your father. And you're making certain connections. Yeah. Um, and of course, I'm sure you'll be making some distinctions as well. Mm -hmm. Because Joshua is definitely different than the both of you. Right. But now you have a girl in the picture. What are you looking forward to as a, as a father yeah. of, a, of, a, of a girl? That is uncharted territory. It is. Yeah. Because Joanna, I believe, is probably the second or the third girl child in the entire wider family. Mm. It's been boys up until Julia, who mm -hmm. Saunders is um, daughter. Mm -hmm. So we, we know how to nurture boys, mm -hmm. but girls, this is new. <laughs> but I can see already that that she you have to be very tenderly with them, very a lot more patient with them and so forth. And there's a popular comedian I heard him speaking about girls. And that you know, boy, you're going to fail when it comes with girls, you can't tell them no. Yeah, that's the part. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm not going on that line to say no. I'm not going to say no. Um, because I, 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 I'll check him out about three years later from now. <laughs> so far, I'll check him out later. <laughs> because I want, although they're different in gender and in different characters, char characteristics. I want both my children to grow up with some principles. Mm -hmm. And and while Josh is the rougher of the two, and we have to be teaching him to be very tender and gentle with your sister even at this age, um, I know that um, both will have to be dealt with differently in order to get to that those principles that we want to instill in them. You grew up in a family that is very um, rich spiritually in terms of spiritual heritage on yeah. both sides of the um, aisle. Yeah. Uh, what was your impression of your grandfather? Mm. Yeah, your granddad. And then I'm going to come to the topic that you were blasting off today. <laughs> I, I, I have some issues with Ella Joe, <laughs> and, uh, but we're going to talk about that one and one. Yeah, let's go. Right, granddad. So, so my grandfather, well, uh, I can speak to my great grandfather on my father's side. Okay. Um, because my maternal grandfather, he actually passed away when I was very young. He passed away a little after I turned one year old. So I, I don't have much memory of him. Um, but what I have heard of him, though, the stories and so forth, it was a very firm and solid man. I mm. uh, love his girls. Mm. Um, my mother has nine siblings, four. Four sisters, five brothers, and was split evenly between the genders. But when it came to his girls, loved them. Boys must go feel their own and and chip up their name. Yeah. But he is a man that really, having ten children to take care of and a wife, what I really pulled from all the stories is that he, he believed in hard work and not absconding on your, 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 your responsibilities. Um, my great grandfather on my father's side. 
he was growing up I always he's passed away but I have this memory of this old man sits on this chair in the barn on the outside never spoke much because he was so angry but he was highly revered and respected throughout the community and he too hearing the stories of him knowing the experiences and so forth you see that that, that, that pattern of, of hard work of instilling principles, of nurturing and taking care of your family. You see that even in him. Um, my father's father is not a Christian, but still those principles exist in him, in taking care of your family, in looking after, in treating the boys versus the girls differently, you know, but still instilling those principles um, in them, being that patriarch in the household. So that's something that from all three ends, I have really seen emulated in my life, that I've actively tried to emulate as well in my life. So, yeah. All right, so today, Ella Joyal spoke to the congregation about the very popular story that we all know in Luke chapter 15 in relation to the two boys. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's very interesting. And you drew from that story something that I want to explore with you. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are watching as well, this issue about... Uh, Failure to launch. Mm. Yeah? Um, I think there was a movie on that. I, mean, yeah, I think Failure to Launch, the guy was in his mother's house or something, whatever. What, you, 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 you basically were saying at one point in the message that it's important for you to stay in your parents' house as long as possible. Yes. You don't believe that. <laughs> you wait until Josh and jo jo um, Joanna get off age. You believe that for sure. No, but, but, but as a congregation, I'm counting down for Josh and I guess 21 years left. Yeah, I heard that part, but I'm saying, the, 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 the thinking, the philosophy, you expect your children to be in house until what age? Uh, until they can launch out on their own. Mm. Yeah, but from the child's perspective, they need to stay safe as much as they can. If you have a household in which there are no problems, you know, it's, it's a home that you look forward to going to. Stay as long as you can. Yeah, but the failure to launch issue is something that has um, it has benefits. Most millennials, yeah. uh, the Pew Research Center has done research on this, and it shows that millennials, uh, which were very fiscal conservative individuals, because they have grown up in an era where they have seen financial volatility actually changing and wiping out mm -hmm. generations of savings over time. So their mindset is very much different from the baby boomers. They they are returning to their parents' homes, mm -hmm. and those who are in their parents' homes are actually failing to leave the parents' home, which can be a major issue. Mm -hmm. It can be a major issue. Mm -hmm. So how, where, where do you where do you strike the balance? Marriage. Marriage. So a person who only leave the house and they marry. Don't cut me a joke. Yeah. Well, and he is already out of his parents' house, yes, so his agreement to do something really yeah. count here. So, but, yeah, how do you help young, um, even parents who may be here at Oak Glades, at HP, mm -hmm. in the wider area? Yes, you want to help your child, but isn't sometimes the best way to help your child to give them a little kick? Boy, when you say it that way, though, you could say push it, it sounds like Fine, you want to. But it's, you want to solve it. Right, fine, fine, fine. Yeah, to, 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 to balance the arguments. That is true. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe, and, and, and this is what I've been hearing from young persons and so forth, they want to launch out, they want to move out, but they're really not in a position, one, financially, and two, mentally, but it to is, is it, take on that responsibility. But is it fair mm -hmm. for them to be the financial um, add on to their parents at the time when they should or are, are at the age mm -hmm. where they can take on their own financial responsibility. Well, you know, let us add a caveat to this. Yes. You should not be in your parents' house when you're at working age and you're not in school and you're not working and contributing to the house. This is all working on the premise that you are working and you're contributing to the household that you're a part of. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to respond. No, I'm so listening. That is amazing for it. So, this is in no wise to say that you should be at home, not working, and you're living off your parents. No, 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 no. 
that likewise is not the basis for this. This is you speaking with your parents, coming to an agreement and understanding that you are going to basically accumulate enough to launch out and be comfortable. Not comfortable meaning rich and have five, six apartments that you're renting out, but where you're not going out to suffer, essentially, and then get to the point where you have to come back home. Mm. Mm -hmm. If, if I had more time, I would explore, but I really am out of time. Because uh, we, want, we want to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Ella Joel, Happy Father's Day to you. Same Welcome same. to the world of raising girls, which yeah. is the best world to be in. Um, I grew up with three boys, and I have a lot to tell you about that another time. So the Lord has spinned it around on me this time, and I now have three girls. Yeah. But it's nice to see Joanna, because really, you know, she's, yeah. And Josh, Josh is there. But I close, I close, Ella. What do you want to say to young people who are thinking and planning about fatherhood? Mm. Uh, what do you think are the three top things that they need to really focus on quickly? Well, number one, ensure that you're married. Um, fatherhood is ineffective unless there's a mother as well, because both of you contribute differently to the development of the child. Two, provide for your family. Um, this doesn't mean you have to make a whole lot of money, but have their best interests and their provisions at heart. Um, always, not consuming your mind, I, I don't want to say that, but know that that is your responsibility. And three, above all, you are the spiritual leader for your family. So if at this point you are not in that position, it takes no money to, to, to spiritually develop and to grow and to nurture yourself in Christ so that you can feed others. But make that your top priority because they will be looking up to you for that kind of thing. I appreciate those three pointers mm -hmm. and I hope that you do too. I want to thank Elder Joel Jackson, one of our elders here at Oakley Assembly of Elders Church in the Hackley Park District of Churches for spending the time sharing with us uh, not just the word for today but also post for Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, really and truly. Big up to you all guys who are keeping your head above the water, keeping the children focused. And of course, keeping them anchored in the Lord. On behalf of all of us here, see you next week when we wrap up Youth Week. This Youth Month, <laughs> rather. We wrap it up next week with um, Elder Evangelist Xavier Walker. So you had Sister Keisha Manning, you had Elder Tremaine Allen, you had Elder Joel Jackson, and Evangelist David Walker is going to take it home next week with Remain in Him. Until then, I'm Omar Zed, the Elephant, signing out right here from OGTV.